Hi, it's Mrs. Moss here. And we last talked about erosion and how erosional surfaces can appear in a geological record and kind of alter the appearance of the age of the rock. Well, today we're going to be talking about different characteristics of rocks that we discover that can help us also age that rock strata. So let's first look at fossils. Fossils are nanny excuse me, fossils are any naturally preserved remains or impressions of living things within the rock. Are we ready to crack open some rocks? Let's take a look at some pictures of fossils. Here's a pretty cool fossil. Here's a fossil of a plant, a 300 million year old leaf found in Italy. This is the New York State fossil, Europe Terrets. And here's another fossil, and you can see this diagram was uh, depicting, here's the fossil, and this is the picture of what that animal looked like when it was alive. Here's another fossil. This is a bony fish fossil known as Priscacara, oh, Priscacara oxprion. Sorry, that's a tongue twister. And here we have a footprint that's found in the Jersey Shore. And they're found in sedimentary rocks. Hopefully you remember why. Well, because the heat and pressure in igneous and metamorphic rocks will destroy any fossils if they are starting to form in them. So what we do with rocks and fossils and rock layers is we try to correlate or correspond or compare or match similar rock strata at different locations to see if they formed at the same time. So we can compare one layer of outcrop to a layer that, of rock that's found way far away. We can look for different characteristics as I mentioned before. Characteristics such as color, texture, composition of the minerals and composition of the rock and the sequence of the layers. Time correlation compares index fossils contained in the rock strata. So what I want you to notice about these two diagrams is that the diagram on the left and the right both have fossils in them. But what we're going to compare are the layers and the actual fossils that are in them. And that will help us determine the age of the rock layer and to know which one may have been deposited first and is therefore older than the other. So here we're going to compare the left side with the right side. And although you see the bottom layer has a similar pattern to it, to one another, because they have different fossils in them, we know that this layer here with the placoderm was deposited first because placoderm is an older fossil or an older species. Then we can look and see there is no number two and we can compare that this second layer number two here is different from this layer here. They look similar if we just took the pictures of them but you notice that the aminoid is located in this rock layer but not this one and because this aminoid fossil is older than the dinosaur we know that this one came after the layer one the, with the placoderm. Then we go up and we see that this same clam is on two of these different sections. We have one here at the bottom and we have one above the aminoid. Well, this tells us that th that clam was from 300 million years ago. So therefore those two layers, although they're different in composition, they were deposited at the same time period. So they're approximately the same age. Then we have number four, where the dinosaur fossils are found in both of those layers, so we know that they were also deposited at the same time. And then if we continue to look at the leftover sedimentary uh, layers, we see that there's a bird here from 163 million years ago and a mastodon from 1.6 million years ago. So these numbers are order from oldest to youngest, one being the oldest, six being the youngest, and we match and compare the, the sides. The best index fossils have the following features. They exist for a very brief time 
and they are widespread. Let's look at these three locations. Imagine these three outcrops are far away from each other. Which fossil will make the best index fossil? The clam, the fish, or the other shell? Well, let's look. If we compare, we're going to look for ones that have each, only, in, only one of these in each of the layers. So I look and I see, well, this shell has, is only one in each of the layers. But if you look, it's matching with this. And this clam has three in one and one in another, and it's not even in this left one. So let's look at this fish. This is one, this is another, and this is another. So which one would be the best? Well, we would need to look at comparing, and we see that this shell is the best because it's found only one in each of the columns, okay? Even though it is on the same level with the clam, it does allow us to see that it was formed widespread at a set period of time. Another way that we can correlate layers is looking at volcanic ash eruptions because that's going to create its own layer within the rock strata. These ash falls are very brief events. A single layer of ash can be found over a large area and this allows geologists to make a time correlation from one location to another at the position of a common ash fall. And a lot of times geologists can use the timeline of what they know of volcanic events to help them determine what time period this volcanic eruption occurred. So here's a picture of three rock layers, rock strata, and we want to know by looking at these three which object would make the best time index marker the clam, the fish, or the ash. Well, again, we're going to look for something that occurs only once in each of the three rock outcrops. And we're going to also look for something that would be, um, which would indicate that that's widespread, but also something that would um, indicate that it was a brief period of time that it existed for. So in this instance, if you look, the white layer is the ash. And that would be the best index indicator right here, this white layer. Notice it's here, it's here, and it's here. So we, <clears throat> excuse me, so we have a geological time scale. Geolo geologists notice that rock formations can be identified by the fossils that they contain. They establish a relative time scale with a sequence of fossil groups from oldest to youngest. And each of these groups was named for a location where its index fossil could be observed in the rock. For example, we have the Devon fossil, and that was given the time period Devonian. I'm going to show you a picture of the De Devon fossil in a moment that was found in Devon, England. Here's a picture of the Devonian fossils of marine life. So because of this, and there was, it was so prevalent during this same rock strata, it allowed the geologists to name this period the Devonian period. Further observations from around the world established the geologic time scale. Let's take a look at this rock. What's the oldest part of this conglomerate rock? Is it the fragment, the vein, or the cement? Well, it would have to be the fragments because those fragments were created a long time before the vein or the cement even occurred. Remember, those rock fragments were once a part of a larger rock, got weathered, and then got um, buried and submerged underwater and it would form and get compacted and cemented together with other uh, rocks and minerals. And then well after that was created, then the vein came. Or within its time of formation, the vein may have occurred as well. But the fragments are the older 
or oldest part of this conglomerate rock. So that's all for now. We're going to continue talking about the geologic history and we're going to look in our reference tables and see how we can use the information there to help us understand our, our Earth's geological history. See you next time.